Magic of the Dandelion. This will be an introduction to negative painting. So we're using a variety of products uh, supplied by Jack Richeson. The first one is the masking fluid. I'm, I'm looking at the rubber stopper and the lid. Uh, really handy for just keeping a good seal on the bottle so that even when you tip it over it uh, it stays in the bottle and it's going to stay fresh too until you need to use it. Also got the uh, the brushes by uh, Stephen Quiller brushes. They're smooth handled and I love the pointed tips on uh, the round brushes. Uh, there's no no points and there's no point in having the brush really. And the Yarka paints. We've got student grade paints but they have a really good strong pigment nice and portable. Got the paper from uh, Stephen Quiller. It's 140 pound cold press and it's on a block so that we don't have to uh, tape the paper down or stretch it. It's all ready to go. Um, I'm going to be using uh, just a little bit in the cap here from the masking fluid and I've cut off uh, a Q-tip on a diagonal cut with scissors. It's a plastic tube Q-tip and it holds the masking fluid and it makes it easy for these little sections and bringing out the shape of the dandelion. That's what I'm having to review in my mind here with a picture that I've taken just of our own dandelions in the backyard. Um, a black and white photo works really good for showing me the dark areas uh, around the flower, under the flower, through the flower. So I'm bearing that in mind. I'm just really painting with the masking fluid any of the white areas that I want to keep. So some different tools that you could try, a uh, tooth, sharp toothpick, plasticized paper clip, grandma's crochet hook, uh, breaking off a piece of synthetic sponge. <clears throat> These are all possibilities uh, for using with masking fluid as a tool. It's fun to try different uh, things. We need to, we kind of expand our vocabulary when we use different tools with the masking fluid. And uh, here I'm thinking uh, small, medium, large shapes and uh, just keeping it really simple. You can do a whole um, string of dandelions or just uh, like I have in, in the images above or you can just do three get the feel of it. Uh, some some of these ideas are good for bookmarks even that size to start would be whatever's fun for you, whatever works for you. Here we go. Using, uh, I've got a, a water tray here that's kind of fun to use too. It's divided up into three separate areas. Uh, cheese trays at Christmas time, that kind of idea. Uh, just keeps the water clean longer when I use those little trays. I keep the sponges usually in the center and sponges I use to control the water on my brush so that I don't have too much water to not enough color and I want to mix a pigment that's strong enough that I can't see through to the bottom of the table. Uh, that's why I like the little pla clear plastic lid in the Yarka set as well. It helps especially beginners who are trying uh, to juggle, you know, or balance how much uh, pigment to water. And I like to use, think of the color wheel too with the Yarka palette. Um, the warm colors on one side, the cool colors on the other, it makes it easier in our thinking. I'm also thinking of the complementary color ye yellow with the purple. I'm keeping them separated here so that they're not going to mix to make mud and the red mixes with the purple just fine. I'm using that cool red in the corner. Uh, I've pretty well got everything I need to make this painting uh, 
a successful one here. So I'm going to wet it down just with a sponge, just for fun. Instead of using a one inch flat brush, let's try just a synthetic sponge. See, uh, wet it down, it makes it easy too. I'll start out with a, my sense of light and the yellow coming in. The yellow is going to be uh, reminding me of that and then I'm going to build on that color. Use my cool tones moving into the green, the blues, and uh, just going to leave a space though when it comes time to put the purple in. I'll, I'll um, fit it in underneath away from the yellow. Just keeps the colors brighter when, when you do that. So I'm moving fairly quickly because the water, the wet on wet, uh, the water will be drying quickly depending on uh, the, the room temperature and that that you're working in. But I work fairly quickly because it does dry pretty fast. So here I'm putting in the purples, I'm trying to stay away from that yellow and leave a bit of space so I'll come back in with the blue-green up where it's close to the yellow. This is color mixing on the paper as well as in the palette. Watercolor is so versatile. The water is uh, a tool in itself. It helps move the paint around. Just finishing off here with a bit of the yellow, blue, yellow, green. I'm going to work on the uh, the inside of the flower just as the black and white photo is showing me here. Where my lights and darks are, um, looking through the flower to the ground underneath. Uh, there's the dark on the inside of the flower as well and just painting the air around the flower. Um, underneath here I'm, I'm thinking of the negative space on either side of the stem and I like to work with um, kind of from one edge to another when I'm doing the negative painting and I'll often use one brush with water and then another brush with color and simultaneously kind of um, using two brushes at once I, I will often do that too. So I'm just going to fill in both inside the flower a bit and then to the outside around the stem bringing out those really the darks around the flower. So whatever my colors were, uh, blue-green or um, purple, whatever is there already, I'm just building out with more of that color, a darker version of the color, and uh, bringing, it'll bring those shapes out a little more. 